Hello and welcome to the Foundry Roundtable, where resistance is futile. Yes, that's right, you will be assimilated by the Foundry Challenge. This is what we're finding. We have uh, old authors coming out of the woodwork. Yeah, it's quite interesting. It is. Uh, we we, we ha had uh, well, one guy who's like, ah, I don't see, see why you need to worry about messing with the foundry because it's broken. And then he's like, oh, well, okay, I guess I'll uh, do something for this challenge. <laughs> <laughs> we are the foundry. Well, you know. You will join us. <laughs> so, yeah, these are like the only voices they can do. Unfortunately, oh, and, I can and, do and, and like none of them uh, sound good for boys. Well, no, I can do a little <laughs> bit of hedonism, but if I get a running start to it. <laughs> well, anyway, okay, um, the chocolate sauce. Oh, dang it! <laughs> Resistance is futile. Um, yes. At any rate, uh, because of course I I didn't mention it. I always have to mention it. <laughs> I am Drogan seventeen oh one, and with me are um, these three chuckleheads. Uh, Green Dragoon, Mark Hawkman, and Duncan Idaho. We always have to endeavor to break the record for descending into madness. <laughs> I, I believe it was like less than a minute there. <laughs> less than a minute, but we've done quicker. And this isn't even a live play. Usually no. we save the madness for live plays. Maybe it's just been a little uh, too long well. since we've done a regular show. The man, <laughs> a little bit. The madness is always with us. <laughs> Um, so, so we did do uh, a show earlier in the week, um, basically just all about uh, you know various things surrounding the new Foundry Challenge. Um, so we won't really talk too much about that tonight, other than say we have uh, quite a few entries now, which is excellent. Um, we could always use and, more. Yeah, we could always use more. So if if you're interested, you still have four weeks. Yeah, and I mean and T6 Connie. I mean, if there is any prize worth it. This is it. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, you're I just assuming that no one would choose anything else. Well, <laughs> but it's someone who completely, I know that's, that's <laughs> what I went through when I recently just completely looked out off of one promo pack. And it's like, Oh, I have to make this decision now. And I still need to buy another pack because I didn't get my 10 lobby. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it just comes down to, it's like, that's I what was, you really wanted. I, I said, like, no, I like if I thought this was going to happen, it's like, no, 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 I'll get the Dorgath. I won't follow the crowd. I'll get the Dorgath. My KDF could use a new ship. It's like, okay, I got it though. I was looking through the choices, but tier six, Connie. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, you're the, the only person who could get a uh, an infinity prize pack and be disappointed. <laughs> Well, it's disappointed in a humorous way of like, I'm the only person who's gotten one and said, dang it. <laughs> and that just happened to really me. My first, that uh, <laughs> my first imprinty prize pack was one where it was like, I was just opening it for the lobby and like, I think I like bought like five or 10 or some small amount. And sure enough, that's this thing is like, but of all the people who are desperately wanting this and I'm the one who's like, eh, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean like using the ship it like it actually took a little bit of building to actually get the tier six connie to a shape that i was happy using it in it does have a slightly awkward configuration at least to how i've been building where it's like i can't really do this i can't really do this so i did this really sort of it, it, like dual beam banks in the front with a gravimetric torpedo omni beams in the back it's like yeah i eventually sort of tweaked it to where it's good but it's like it is just a ship <laughs> ultimately <laughs> it is. Like the Excelsior is also a rare ship. ship from that era. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah, a rare I think ship. It's, yeah, it's the rare ship, and it's the Constitution, it, and it's it, like it makes me wonder what are they going to do with the Discovery version Constitution? It could be something similar to what they did with the um, could, yeah, they could put the it in TMP the room. yeah the R and well, uh, R and D pack. Well, I can see them. There's a couple of ways they can go. Is either like just release the skin, like they did with the TMP Connie, maybe even make a new lower tier sea store ship for it, or they make a new variant and then put that in the R and D bag. Yeah. So we'll see. Well, I mean, or they could face it. How, how many uh, bug ships have they made already? <laughs> <laughs> Three or four. Yeah, but how many different skins are there? Because there's a bunch of like there, there's a Three, few, three or four. Oh, okay. Because I like I know there's like the tier six one and then the standard one. 
there's a special variant uh, that Jim Hadar captains get at T5U as their starter ship. Well, I'm talking about the uh, costume option because we've only right. got I th- the I cost- think- costume option. I think there's I think there is only two. OK, so that it's that's one of the precedents because yeah. they could just like release a new I, variant. But I believe there is. Is there two C- T6 versions? I think so. Like the with recon di- variant and then another. Yeah, Actually, there's series. there's only two T5 versions of it. Uh, one is the original and one is the uh, um, starter ship. All yeah. of the other variants of the bug ship are T6. Yes. Well, yeah, we're just looking at the spec. Yeah, so, so I mean, in total, there's about four. I'll look it up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, what what we're going to do tonight, um, we're, we're going to keep this show a little bit shorter, but um, what we're going to do tonight is we're going to talk about something that came um, up on the forums, and we're going to go into the foundry and uh, do a little building, um, which is how to make a good boss fight. Mm-hmm. Um you know, your your average captain mob is only going to be so strong, you know, and most of us can take him down. So how do you make a, a meaningful, you know, your, your plot builds up to a, something where you need to fight the boss and it needs to be dramatic and, and cool and over the top. And, you know, how do you do that? Mm. Yeah. And just for the record, there are two different tier six Jem'Hadar um, strike ships mm-hmm. listed in the promo store. Mm hmm. So they will have different spec seating. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. I believe they look the same, though. Yeah, they should. Like, one is just basically using the tier six skin. The other one is pictured as using the other skin, but they probably both come with both. <laughs> okay, so um, we're going to do this a little circuitously. So while uh, Dragoon transitions over to the foundry, Mark has a mission review. So, um, yes. Uh, this mission is by Demon7980. It is called Operation Deep End. Now, this is an interesting mission to me because of the story on it. The story is actually pretty good. As, um, what it is is that they need you to go and deal with a problem that, the, that some of the uh, remaining... Um, ah, dang it. What are the bad guys in the Delta Rising story arc again? Oh, the Vodwar. Vodwar. I, I, yeah, okay, Vodwar. Ugh. I have no idea how I uh, suddenly forgot that. But anyways, no, it it's a group of Vodwar that are attacking a planet that is friendly to the Alliance. Now, the main problem, um, ah, the mission has a few technical flaws that are things that are awkwardly constructed, mainly because of the fact that he had this annoying habit of taking several mobs and dumping them right next to, on, to each other so that you have to fight them simultaneously, which... In some cases, it works fine. In some cases, it doesn't. It It's one of those things that's very finicky and you have to watch out for it. Also, he added doors to the map. So, to make it, uh, so you had to walk up to a door, wait for the door to open. Then the enemies jump you as soon as the door opens. <sighs> Anyways, the story is actually pretty good, though, because of the fact that you go to this planet, you find out that there's actually a specific reason the Vadwar are, fu- are attacking the planet. And the specific reason I actually forgot because I didn't make it notes of it. But I don't know, it was something that was interesting because it wasn't as straightforward as the Vadwar are being co- uh, Imperial dicks. It wasn't that simple. Which, you know, that was actually rather refreshing because the story actually had like a specific reason why the Vadwar wanted this planet instead of just, you know, hey, it's more territory. That's always good to see in a Foundry mission is, you know, the bad guys are not just being bad guys for the sake of being bad guys. And he also, he actually like wrote, um, you know, more to the uh, defenders than... Please save us. There's a lot more to the uh, story uh, that you read about the uh, defending uh, people. 
I just wish he'd done a better job of spacing out the enemy mobs. That was... Honestly, I, I kind of categorize his mob placement as a rookie mistake. <sighs> oh, well. Anyways, though. The, honestly, the mob placement and uh, having them in piles is actually the only thing I hated about the mission. He He did some pretty good interiors, which... Well, you look around and it's not nothing that's really like Im- elaborate. It is very well chosen to fit with the mission. So about how many stars would you say? Uh, uh, I go with three, if only because of the fact that the having multiple mobs dogpile you as soon as you open a door was really, really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> well, combat balance is, you know, that can be a tough thing to get right. And coincidentally, uh, that's what we're talking about uh, on this uh, stream. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. I did not pick this mission because I knew you were going to do that. That was a coincidence. <laughs> well, no, because no, I, t- I didn't tell anybody I was going to bring this topic up tonight. So... Um, but let's uh, segue into that then. So, Dragoon, have you got the Foundry open? I do. I have everything set up. Oh. I was just quick setting okay. up a test oh, map wait. here. Uh, uh, sorry, I forgot something. It's a KDF mission. Ah. I forgot to mention that earlier. <laughs> okay. I actually so is... played it on my uh, 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 Jim Hadar recruit. So that is Operation Deep End mm-hmm. on the KDF side. Give it a play. Okay, so... Um, what are you guys' thoughts on boss encounters? Uh, a, write it well, and B, do something different. There's more than one way yeah. to encounter a boss. So don't just stick a captain mob down and leave it at that. Right. Is it yeah. an optional dialogue encounter? <laughs> no, never. Not usually for bosses. Optional dialogue is the devil. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a heretic. Uh, so, yeah, like the immediate inclination, the simple way is basically I will spawn a captain mob. I will have the player fight a captain mob. And one of the captain mob units will be the boss. Boss dead, move on. That's, you know, I've done that. And it just sort of. all like, done that. Yeah. And it's sort of like one of those things where it sort of almost feels perfunctory, where it's like if you just need it. It's sort of a good bread and butter technique of just making sure that captain unit is that unit. You can sort of build the scene around it to make it a little bit more elaborate than the mechanics suggest. But you can also break up that fight into multiple sections, not just like with different enemy types, just pog piling in. But what you can do is have different mechanics, like start with the boss behind a force field and then have to disable a security console defended by um, enemy units to be able to access the boss or, you know, do something that is preventing him from taking or keeping him from being shot at or, yeah, just something. So you can throw in a secondary objective, usually an interact, probably best on this one, um, where it unlocks that captain level fight. So it feels like it's still part of the same engagement, but you're doing something a little bit different to set that up. Duncan, you have literally just set me up for the perfect segue. <laughs> Because I've been doing exactly that on the uh, 26th century mission I've been working on. Woo! And I pulled it up. I'm going to go ahead and uh, launch this so you can kind of see what... So yeah, in this case, it's... Obviously, captains aren't that hard, especially for anyone who's bothered to gear just a little bit. Um, I tend well, to one keep... thing I noticed from, from doing story missions is that a lot of NPC types switching to a melee weapon and beating the captain to death with a melee weapon makes the AI bug out and the captain stops using powers. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> I, I don't know why. It's just like, like there's like a, a flag in the AI code where it stops doing most of the AI script because you're in melee range. I was actually working on uh, this today and uh, trying to get it done for the show, and I didn't quite make it. Um, I still got some a bit more dialogue I got to write, and uh, but I think most of the uh, interactions are in place. So I have to run through the whole map, but got the shuttle. Also, 
since Drogan introduced the topic, I've had the Mortal Kombat theme playing in my head. Mortal Kombat! Round one. Fight. Uh, <laughs> All right, so oh yeah, that that reminds me of of another topic that came up on the forum: how to make dead guys. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, it's actually uh, oh, wow. a simple thing. It's just yeah, pretty, you know pretty, one pretty of those. I mean, Primar, this is the show we are running. <laughs> <laughs> There's only one way it goes. Of course. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure that's meant with a including himself. <laughs> it would have to be. You know. I mean, of the things we've this, done this on is this coming show, from a guy who who plays uh, what is it, World of Trucks or whatever it is, Truck Simulator, <laughs> Euro Truck Thanks. Simulator or something, Euro Truck Simulator. I like the idea of World of Trucks, though. <laughs> I mean, just basically make a World of Warcraft type game, but you're just in a truck, but try to keep the mechanics. <laughs> Of like truck Mageddon or something. Yeah, it's basically the entire world is just trucks, and it's probably actually more of a JRPG because that's sort of more amenable to making the entire universe revolve around a single mechanic. So, one of the things, the first things I'm going to point trucks. out is that uh, designing a good boss fight first uh, starts with understanding how the boss fight is different than the other fights leading up to it. Yeah, so, and you know planning accordingly yeah it's not enough that you have to just make the captain fight a little bit stronger it's that you need to mechanically differentiate it so that it's a change up in the uh, pattern Mm -hmm. and i I find it's also good to physically separate the boss fight from regular enemy encounters like you know like here we have a building with several hallways and stuff you fight through several different hallways and eventually you get to the end and that's where the uh, boss is hiding primar he's a gentleman one does not use the kill button in uh, surroundings like this you fight like an honorable individual uh, I'll also, it, it, I'm lacking, testing, lacking your but... bridge officers because uh, it, it, it looks like he ha- has like genuine bridge officers because they don't ha- all have the name security on them. No, I yeah. I did develop some yeah. actual bridge officers, but you'll notice I'm oh. still in God mode for this. So, well, I'm not yeah, a complete but, but all... well, yes, he, you, you made yourself unkillable, sure. There, but that's... There, there's no yeah. honor, but in you're using loot kill weapons button. rather than account reclaimed weapons. Uh. I, I, I will kind of claim whatever I can, but... Oh, well, yeah. I mean, because I've done the uh, some of the, uh, uh, you, the PvE okay. events, those all transfer. You could account reclaim the um, uh, electric shotgun thing from the Sompek arena. Okay, yeah, so, uh, so we're at where we need to be here. So, yeah. So we've cut, reached the boss fight. And we've got a little bit of uh, um, set up. We've got, had the initial taunt by the, uh, the boss, who is behind a force field. And we've got our bridge officer letting us know that we need to uh, disable these force fields. And so there are two generators on either side. And we've got incidental mobs, which I apparently for- didn't make the correct faction. So I should be shooting them. But luckily, they're not key to... Uh, yeah, if, if, if you screw up, you can actually uh, break a mission by uh, making an enemy part of a kill objective and spawning a friendly mob. No, they should be shooting me. They're not. Um, but you would fight a couple events. And so kind of a warm-up, and then we so lower we the force field. Fight those guys on the one side and lower the force field. Fight the guys on I the really side. wish we had uh, uh, giant force field things that weren't Borg. But hey, the, the Borg force fields are passable. Uh, I had you an asset have, limit. Could, <laughs> yeah. Well, well, that, okay. Yeah, too. the... Um, yeah, so what I do sometimes if I need to create a custom unit is basically to um, use glass. Because <laughs> it's it's like a TOS force field. Hmm. Actually, yeah, in, in TOS, the, the force fields they used all had a really, really simple appearance to them. Then they just got angrier and <laughs> just more animated. We got more money, throw it in. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean... It, it, and TOS era, they simply didn't have the option of using CGI effects. Yeah. And all, 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 all of the visual effects you see, like the transporters, were accomplished either with um, 
digital compot or not digital but analog image compositing yeah which is um compared to what people do nowadays really hard yep. i mean like the tron movie oh, yeah. it's like yes they did use cgi for certain things in the tron movie not the character costumes though no they use like a fluorescent <laughs> thing no 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 they actually like hand painted on the uh oh that's right Rotos- yeah. Rot- rotoscoping is what it's called it, 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 it's oh, a, a technique that, that ironically I, they, they didn't use any of that for tron legacy it's completely different techniques <laughs> Why would they I just like the idea that for Tron Legacy. I, Why? No, no, I, for <laughs> authenticity. No. <Yeah. laughs> um, actually, I think what it was for the costumes, it was all just built in. They didn't use any CGI on the costumes. Mm, no, no, no. See, because what it is is that on the costumes, you would ha- they the costumes they built had colored lines in the locations where you had the glowing colored lines in the finished version. It's just that they had to hand paint on the glowing colored lines, uh, uh, frame by frame in this uh, film. Yeah, it's a process called <laughs> rotoscoping. Yeah. Yeah. If anyone wants to see why it's not used anymore or why it never it's really, really took hard. Off, well, that, <laughs> but also look at the sort of the uncanny valley effect by looking at the original animated quote, Lord of the Rings. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> the pain. Yeah, that was murder the horror. It's, I don't want to say that I it's love, I like love a, that movie so much a because it's so technique, horrible. but yeah, it's time consuming because you've basically got to go in there and manually have somebody trace film. First, you shoot the movie like you would normally. Second, yep. you take the entire thing frame by frame. After you're done cutting and editing the movie, then you apply the uh, glowing lines to to it a, fr- a frame at a time. Yeah. Well, it's basically so, so just we've, your... um, we've yeah. gone off topic again, like, <laughs> like we always do. <laughs> um, okay, so that's uh, one way to do the boss fight, which is essentially you you build in kind of a delay before you actually fight the guy. Yeah. Which is something that you saw in the old Borg STFs is because the fact that, you know, you fight through waves of enemies to get to the boss room. You, you kill a bunch of mooks in the boss room. Then the, the, the boss force field comes down and, and then the boss decides to kick your butt and fail. But you know, it's an STF. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The one thing I'll recommend to authors is that they may see for new authors, you may see a bluegill unit labeled boss. Do not use this. It will eat you. And then your bridge officers. Yep. I well, did that once. Well, why, and... why, don't we, why don't we try that? Okay. Okay. Let's, let's yeah. If I remember we, right, that, use that mob in the unit, it. if you put it in, uh, it's one, spawns mooks endlessly because that's what it does. Two, it actually doesn't have a huge damage output. It just it has like a million health or something stupid yeah. like that. I like I I tried that once and then life tested the mission. And it's like, wow, this is just taking forever. I think I eventually killed it. No, no, I gave up. I gave up. It's like no, no, this just isn't gonna do it. But again, though, it, it, it's one of those things where uh, you just beat on it until it eventually uh, gets bored and uh, falls over dead. Well, yeah, it's just the the amount of hit points it has is unrealistic to a single player completing your mission. Because and it came from the Bug Hunt STF, and it's the end boss of the Bug directly Hunt Directly from it. So, yeah, so the only way you could possibly fight it is basically you have a single map project, so you don't have to worry about the teaming bug, and you uh, set it for you... five players. <laughs> or you could set it so that you have, have an NPC. Oh yeah, you a bunch of uh, yeah, so a bunch of NPCs just providing some backup. That'd be another way to supplement it. But yeah, even still, a lot of the NPC mobs don't have that much killing power, so it's going to be a help, but it's still going to take a lot to work through that. Twitch is interesting sometimes. Um, for some reason, it um, didn't. It like blocks STF. STF, yeah. What do you suppose that means in some weird corner of the internet that it, they were going to block that? I have no idea. May, maybe we shouldn't speculate. <laughs> yeah, that's something that we see a lot on the uh, um, the uh, uh, the Ten Ford Weekly live stream. Because even okay. if we just say, that "Oh, is, 
That's wild. I'm still in God mode here. What? Still waiting. Is it killing you? Uh, it can't. I'm in God mode. It certainly drops a lot of acid. Yeah, and I'm just wailing on it, and I'm barely denting his... <laughs> so that's why you don't want to use that mob. Um, but we should talk uh, about what What are some uh, other uh, captain the level mobs? you're on the uh, HP meter so we can see the HP meter. Just like hover over the green bar and it's uh, enemy uh, thing. Okay, so the Vorgon commander currently, and this is at, uh, what level am I? I think like eight or something. So it's going to be scaled down-ish. Uh, it is, uh, he's currently got a total of 11,889 health. That's compared Ooh, to mine eight. of 242. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Several thousand health is impressively, yeah. yeah. So, so that's why you know, are, are not a good why are, are there like holographic enemy things that are walking sideways? Because uh, they're humanoid mobs reskinned onto something that uh, oh, was not. Oh, yeah. they're, they're, they're blue they're, they're pestilence. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the little flappy th uh, bug things. Uh, um, I, I'd never seen one of those reskinned to look like a humanoid before. So yeah. we should talk about what um, are some good captain mobs to use in a boss fight. Gorn. Yeah, Gorn. If you're going I, for that, like superhuman tough. Um, I I aspect. I would. I'm tempted to jokingly suggest Tholians, but Tholian captain mobs have that irritating. I, I, I'm a. Uh, AOE your entire team to death attack. Um, one that's that also doesn't have to work. Like you can reskin pretty easily and don't have to worry about it spawning lesser units. Davidian. That's one I like for a boss mob with superpowers. Doesn't it make him sort of fly, float around though? Well, that's well, the idea. Is that you make it like a little bit, but not too bad. Like I use this a lot in. Yeah, I just through a lot of like hyper advanced civilizations where they're not using guns, they're just using miscellaneous energy attacks. Mm. Um, Undine can sort of serve the same purpose, but Davidian, like I've used that a bunch of works out pretty well. Um, Fet Cleary can do some weird stuff. I like using them much more for ensign level mobs. Um, um, Fet Cleary will spawn things, you know, the yeah. little floating guys. But yeah, um, at, at Ensign they don't do that, so that's why I like it, it there. It was um, it was kind of funny. I did a, a mission with, um, essentially it was a boss fight where you you had a couple of Gorn bodyguards towards the end of the mission that you had to fight, and they, um, I used, Fakiri <laughs> for that, and then somebody came along and said, this is, you know, something. Like, why were the Gorn wizards? Well, that was me. <laughs> that was you. Okay, <laughs> the Gorn of deployed wizards. My character's arm is freaking out, and I don't know why. <laughs> like sticking out one direction and stuck. Um, That's I think long. I think it's it's because you were firing while your character did the splat hit animation. Oh, and it just yeah, uh, this is just all kinds of broken. Yeah, well, she, I'm she, in she, god she, mode, because... so it's, I'm mostly immune to what it's throwing at me. Hey, I finally uh, took it down. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, god mode does does weird things with certain uh, effects, like. Back when we used to be able to go to Q's Winter Wonderland, um, if you had God Mode turned on and you got frozen during the um, uh, Snowball Fight event, um, your character's upper torso would freeze it in place and be immobile, but your legs would move because you could still walk around. So another... I think another good... Um one would be Vodwar. Mm. Okay, let's go ahead. Okay. Vodwar works. works pretty good. They'd be fairly tough. Yeah, obviously it, testing in the foundry isn't the best place to test all yeah, this, but we yeah. get an idea from here. Um, let's see, what else? I, um, if you need something that's a little... Actually, here's one, Nausicaan. Mm. Like miscellaneous mercenaries, yeah, just angry guns mm -hmm. and still they also have a lot of hit points for the higher level units so they can provide a bit of a challenge too so Nosskins yeah. are also another another one of my uh, games i wouldn't really describe Nosskins as challenging but they are some they, annoying bullets they sponges. can be if you're not 
terribly. Yeah, it's items. the bullet spun. It's the bullet sponginess I'm talking about. Just more than your also. Flight. There's the fact that Nausicans like to spam hold attacks. That <laughs> it, uh, the, the bullet yeah, they, sponge yeah, thing go, that, goes um, from minor annoyance to major pain in the ass when only two of your team are actually shooting at him. <laughs> um, Primar says um, one of the captain mobs is actually the bluegill powered version. Ooh. Oh right, that which one. should make it a little harder. Uh, no, I would not call that a little harder. <laughs> a lot harder. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can see I'm going on a goal. It's the goal boss fight. That's right. Oh, so that's certainly a good one. I so, yeah, think if you want like a actually superhuman well, supported by. But keep in mind they spawn the tech drones there. Yeah, but I yeah. mean they're, they're not the they're not the worst. I mean, no, that's not the worst. Um, the worst, of course, is going to be either your Remans who spawn little you know glowy holographic versions of themselves, or the uh, Herogen. The, the the funny thing with with the uh, uh, Remans though about their glowing holographic versions of themselves is that they're actually. Yeah. Not this very detailed holograms. So, so uh, other than that, the fact that they have a distinctively shaped uniform, because it's the um, movie Riemann uniform, which we don't actually have the ability to use. Uh, if if the the pointy shoulder pads are the part of the. Uh, uh, Riemann holograms that are actually the most distinctive because you can't actually make out any facial features because it's this purple glowy mass. Yeah, let's do some. Uh... Also, some remember that, that 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 mission mission I was talking about earlier that I played. In hindsight, he probably used the Gaul Captain mob. Uh, for that mission, because I, it just occurred to me that the Captain Mob that he put at the end of that mission behaved differently from the ones he'd used previously in the mission, because it would do this leaping smash attack. That, yep, that that's the infected uh, version. Yeah. <laughs> Which I didn't even realize we had in the Foundry. I mean, that, that'd be really good for... I can see a few instances where that would be handy for uh, doing a boss fight. That one really stands out because they, the play different, so differently from the other, Thodwar. Oh, it's different. Oh yes, it is very different. It is very in your face different. So much in your face. <laughs> um, let's see. The the Breen captains have some pretty high damage attacks, as I recall. Yeah. It's um, it's that AOE pulse, which yeah. oh, also the, the one of the things with the Breen captains is that they have this passive aura that inflicts cold damage on you if you get closer than like five meters. Of course, you got to work so, in the cold uh, damage somehow. Which or, means that Breen are a major league pain in the ass to fight in narrow corridors. Because they, they like to spam AOE attacks, which, let's face it, if it's a narrow corridor, it will hit your entire team because you can't hide. So, you know. Yeah, so you can always uh, find story reasons why these mobs are using these powers, if you want. Yeah. I, I mean, for uh, certain of them, you can simply say that it's a, um, you know... It's not the Breen. It's a race that uses similar technology to the Breen. Maybe, maybe they bought it from the Breen. Tell you what, if you want space yeah. magic, Heralds are way to go. Uh, yeah, Heralds are designed to look like space magic. Literally. I don't know if the, the uh, animations quite transfer over properly, but it's not horribly breaking. And he, they, they have a lot of health. I mean... Uh, there are about 2,700. Question, is this the Harbinger of Imtara, Teket, or the other one? I can't tell. I reskinned them. It doesn't say when you uh, read the description of the mob. Hmm. Uh, oh, well. Uh, nope. Oh, wow. It says Forgan Commander, like I said it. 
Tell you what, he oh, did well, some serious I, damage. I, I, I meant when, when you're like, uh, looking in the um, game asset database when you're placing oh. the mission. So another thing you can do for boss fights is like a bait and switch, which is once you've downed the captain, the first captain mob, you have the villain come on and say, ha ha, you didn't really kill me. And then you fight another captain mob. Yeah, I usually like to stagger it so that you'll you'll fight like with a commander or something the first time and then and then swap it out for a captain. So say, ha ha, you thought it was that going to be that easy. Well, 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 one thing that uh, one, one of the missions I, I played this week while I was looking for something to review, um, one thing he did was he had this encounter where you're going through this hallway uh, as you clear out this facility, okay? Um, then you get to this one point where there's just like this random uh, bend in the hallway. And when you get to the random bend in the hallway, uh, there's a spawn trigger which dumps a green enemy mob on top of you in a narrow hallway. But... It gets worse because he set triggers so that each time you killed the mob, another one would spawn. And he did that like three or four times. I, I really have no idea how many Breen I killed in that fight. I didn't pay a whole lot of attention. I just mashed the kill things button. <laughs> so something uh, else to point out is that Captain 01 is the weakest of the Captain mobs. Captain 02 ups it just a little bit more. And then... Uh, Captain 3 is the toughest of the captain groups. Because it's slowly swapping out the... So I think it's a uh, uh, captain, lieutenant, and three ensigns. And then it swaps mm. it out for um, a captain and three lieutenants. And then the third one bumps it up to a captain, a commander, and two lieutenants. So it's kind of slowly upping the, the support the captain has with each group. I'm going to try Gorn next. Well, I mean... The that's that's true of most groups. I'm not 100 percent sure it's the same for all of them, but something like that, yeah. So uh, I, I remember right. Some of them have non-traditional numbers of uh, mooks uh, attached to them. Uh, Voth is kind of interesting. Um, so they they have some pretty strong powers, and then occasionally they'll spawn dinosaurs. That that makes them tricky to work with, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, unless you want yeah, to work that, it into your story that your boss is somehow a dinosaur tamer. Yeah, the, there's the, no the guarantee of what they'll spawn. The founder version of the Voth um, are randomized between raptors and actual Voth. And the mechs as well. I think they might spawn. If yep. I remember correctly, you can reskin them so that they always at least look like Voth, even though sometimes they'll act like raptors instead of Voth. Uh I forgot that the uh, the Goran spawn. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, they attack centrist. stars. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For one thing, Primar mentioned is that uh, sometimes you will end up with a decentrist mech stomping around after mm -hmm. chasing you. So um, we we've been mainly focused on ground uh, for space. Um, battleship, battleships, obviously. Yeah, I've. Honestly, not much choice I mean, there. I don't generally unless Spawn you've a got more weak support. Mobs just to, yeah. I don't recommend going about battleship because just going through reviews, I've had more than a few. Some people say the we don't actually easy, have the ability to directly. We don't have the ability to directly spawn dreadnoughts. Uh, dreadnoughts come in in foundry missions if you uh, set it to spawn a battleship group and multiplay it. Yeah, if you're a team of what about three or more. You might get it a might, huh? Yeah, something like that. Well, uh, you kind of have to be on the low end. Um, battleships, there are there are players who struggle taking down a battleship. Uh, just going from my own reviews that I get, there are clearly people who are like frustrated that I put a battleship in the in the mission. Like they couldn't, they felt like they could not beat it. Hmm. Yeah, which, battle, which, which which battleship? Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm curious now. Green. Um, yeah, I've Breen. had some people complain about the Breen, and I think it's it's because it's usually a test it's of... Because, it's, it's because if you don't have power drain resistance, the Breen will rip you to part. 
Uh, they will suck your power levels to nothing, and then you will be left dead in space, and they will shred you. That's well, the problem okay. with the brain. <laughs> Part of it, but I haven't noticed that they sort of drain you completely. It kind of depends on where the build is right now with regard to power yeah. drain. Sometimes mm. it's a little overpowered, sometimes it isn't. And it's just, you know, it's one of the things in the DPS meta that's changed a little bit more frequently than others. But it's also one of the things, too, that players will encounter those is part of the story, and they'll need to progress it. So just fighting a battleship, if if it's one battleship, no matter what the unit type, because these are all just ported over from the main mission, uh, main mission series, players should be able to overcome it. It's when you do two that it's like, okay, you're pushing it there. Or yeah, one battleship and then two cruisers. And yeah, um, There is a certain part of the player base who likes to set shield power to nearly nothing just because they want to maximize weapon power so they can kill things faster. These players, unless they get the drop on an enemy, will get flattened by Breen because the Breen will suck their shields out of existence completely, and then flat, uh, you know, torpedo barrage to the hull. Yeah, but w that's one of the things you'll encounter in review are players who are kind of coasting, I mean, you could say, that maybe they haven't put enough time into their builds and they hit a foundry mission, and then it's like, they're, they're just fighting regular units, but then they'll still have problems, and that's just basically it should be assigned to them of like, okay, you might want to upgrade that white gear. <laughs> It, yeah. it, it was a, a similar issue that people had when they added the Undine Battle Zone because people kept complaining about how they couldn't get out of the fluidic rifts. And people were like, okay, so what's your uh, engine power set to? And they're like, engine power? We don't need that for anything. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I mean, it it is good to keep in mind that you're... The, the players that will be playing your mission are incredibly diverse in their ability Ability to defeat enemies. <laughs> yes, this is true. So, and, and there, there are some people who have what they consider to be good builds that, in reality, are, are highly specialized builds that aren't good at everything. Yeah. yeah, they're good at certain things. Yeah, and once they branch out of CCA or ISA, it's like, yep, now you're out of your specialized environment. So <laughs> they just assume that my build is good there. It should always be good. Should it? Did. It is a good build. I have proof. I have done the DPS test. It's like, well, <laughs> that's why there's always so much tap landing, like right yeah. after a new uh, enemy type is yeah. matched. You, 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 you've you've uh, tested your DPS. Now, now time to test your HP. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and it's one of those things where it does come down to gameplay style, and some players are more flexible than others. So whenever you get feedback like that, just take it with a grain of salt and. Kind of process yeah. through it yourself and uh, how I you mean, built the encounter. Is it reasonable? Uh, Test and, it, you know, it. You know, certain mobs are going to be more powerful than others. Yeah. Um, you know, in space, um, you know, your Iconians are going to be fairly powerful. Um, your Kazon uh, is probably not. Yeah. <laughs> um, the Kazon the are surprisingly thought, irritating. Thought they were really pretty, are uh, tough. Um, yeah, cool some people. Vaughn yeah. have some very annoying powers. Yeah. See, um, see well, what makes the, the Kazon irritating to fight is that they gave all of the mobs EPTS, uh, not EPTS, but sorry, but uh, evasive maneuvers, and they will use it at random. So uh, a, a lot of people would do things like uh, line up a strafing run, which, you know, against most mobs will just, you know, completely wipe the mob out of existence. They try this uh, against the Kazon. The Kazon hits uh, evasive maneuvers and gets behind them and then starts shooting uh, them in the back. <laughs> and they already used all their buffs, uh, which got wasted because, you know. <laughs> yeah. So as far as building space combat go or space boss fights go, it's usually going to come down to a battleship. And you can still use the same tricks, but because you're dealing with a space setting, a one-on-one -on -one ship encounter is a little bit more conventional. Ooh. Uh, well, for uh, that, Star Trek, I, so it's one of those things where it's like you, there's a little bit less need to get away from it. But once you have a ground environment, you can. There's more to play with. Yeah. One thing I personally find to be hilarious for space uh, boss fights is Orion battleships, because of the fact that they constantly spawn fighters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, one one thing you can do for a space boss fight is you know kind of prolong the boss fight a little bit. So when you encounter the enemy boss's ship you set up that encounter 
And then once it's destroyed, you have some way that the boss survived. And then you go onto a ground map and fight him there. Mm. Which is exactly what I do in 26th Century Pilot. Yeah. Because that was the boss fight from... Well, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's a good idea. Hmm? You know, uh, and, uh, and, another and, one... One other one I've seen people do that's kind of, well, it's one of those things where, it's, again, it's something that it will wreck some builds like No Tomorrow, and some builds just won't care that it's there. But one thing you can do is spawn a boss a ship and uh, a fighter swarm next to the boss ship. Yeah, and that, that it, adds it makes a little, the fight bit, of a little bit dimension harder. to it. Yeah. And the, the fighters really don't do a lot of damage. They just annoy you for the most part. Yeah. So what I sometimes do if I want to stagger out a boss fight um, is I will create NPC contact versions. So I'm going to throw it down. So let's say I want... Uh, I'm going to re... You're talking about it. Let's uh, reskin a... If I was doing this right, I would properly reskin all of them, but I'm going to, for this for this case, I'm just going to, and the, because there's only one of me, I'm just going to reskin them all as the uh, flagship. Uh, ideally, uh, you, you would want to uh, tinker with it until you figured out which one is which size of ship, but that's time-consuming. Yeah. I think, do, do we still have a, a, a database of uh, what all of the... Uh, items are for those well uh, that we... was on starbase ugc and yeah it's up mm. and then i've got a copy of it that i saved on google drive yeah yeah my my strategy for is either just re skin them is all the same or if i'm feeling adventurous number them play it make a note and skin that one there we go space mm. all right and here's so... a boss fight how do you <laughs> here's here's a boss fight i'm dealing with right now how do I use the foundry when a small little cat is trying to bite my arms off? <laughs> um, I'm sorry, there's no solution to that. No, I'm just going to have to give in. Uh, I grow a second pair of arms. Uh, no, I'm on the attack. Right, yummy, so yummy, I'm setting up a super simple scenario here. So. E -E -I I just noticed something I hadn't noticed before. Hakeem's chair has those uh, colored uh, uh, candy-looking buttons uh, from TOS on the arms. Hmm. Actually, you know what? All, all of the uh, British chairs with arms on this bridge have the same style of arms. Interesting. Okay, so first, uh, the... so you can you can kind of tier an inter an encounter by uh, adding in uh, like only bringing like having a fleet there, but only having them attack the player in waves. And then what you could do is uh... the 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 interesting thing is that. If it's a non-kill objective, you can s trigger enemies to spawn on the death of other enemies. But if it's a kill objective, the enemies will all spawn as soon as the kill objective starts. So you can't um, kill... Or, so you have to complete each stage of the kill objective uh, one at a time. Now, if you want to stretch out a battle sometimes, there's, um, you know, ways to pause in the middle of it. So I had this one mission where I had a big fleet battle, and then it's, you know, officer chimes in with captain. They sent over a boarding party. So you go to an interior map and fight off a boarding party, then go back to the exterior map, fight off another wave of ships. Uh, in Diplomacy in the Gamma Quadrant, uh, the mission ends with a big space battle. Okay, technically it doesn't end. That's in the middle of the mission. But whatever. Anyways, um, uh, the big space battle in the mission, uh, it has multiple waves, which are separated by dialogue with Endless, where Endless tells you how much of an idiot you are. And also 
uh, does this little like countdown thing, which is like five, four, three, and then uh, uh, when when you uh, uh, click the uh, dialogue button to make the, to close the dialogue, the uh, enemies uh, drop out of warp on top of you. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just reskinning a bunch of escorts to prove my point. So in this case, I'm designing a two-wave battle. And you could do more. You could do like a three-wave battle if you wanted to stretch it out a little bit further. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to like have two sets of each uh, group. One that's... Uh, for combat and one that's a uh, non-combat and then so i'll start with the non-combats and then swap in the uh four combat ones as mm -hmm. they uh get activated okay so Actually, yeah, so uh, now, now that I think about it, uh, all of the Vorta in DS9 were written to be somewhat snarky with varying levels and types of being snarky. <laughs> so the uh, Starbase UGC post um, where, uh, who, who was it? Tukana had figured out um, exactly what spawns and give you numbers to figure it out um, out, of, out of space bombs. It's still there. Unfortunately, the... the you know, in the huge um, uh, explosion that nearly killed Starbase UGC, um, the formatting got weird. So hopefully, uh, uh, and, and ho hopefully, Cadis can figure it out. The, the the formatting thing is probably because it's a different version of software running the site than the previous version, and you know, version incompatibility issues. Probably something like that. Okay. Are you going to finish his machinations here? I'm trying. Pet. Pet Freaking cat. Ow. So which cat is it? AEI yeah. Judge Cat. Yeah, she's the one who does the streaming stuff with me. Yeah, uh, it jumps on your face while you're trying to to uh, be photographed. Well, Jill jump on the back of the chair and just sort of like come over for like, I want attention. You're not paying attention to me. <laughs> Sounds like a cat. Yep. Typical oh, cat good. behavior, yeah. So, yeah, just a bunch of different, uh, um, just sort of wrap up here. Um, yeah, uh, just a bunch of different ways of structuring this. And they, basically the idea is that you want to just provide a little bit more structure because just jumping straight to the pitch is something that players will have seen a lot, both through Cryptic Missions and through other Foundry Missions. So little things you can do to sort of change the premise, change the approach. Always good to sort of make your mission stand out a little bit more because you have to keep in mind is that Sometimes it'll be someone's first Foundry mission, but you just sort of want to make it stand out in experience, even if they, you know, it is. They'll still be playing plenty of other missions after this. So, yeah, it's just being aware of the conventions in your work, uh, in the genre you're working at is generally a pretty good thing. I am almost ready here. <laughs> uh, Sorry. Bloodleaf... Um had a suggestion a while back, so, you know, uh, basically to, to somehow uh, have your player talk their way out of, uh, you know, have the option to talk their way out of a fight rather than fighting the boss. I've, um, like, if, yeah. if, you, if you do it outside of objectives, you can do there's that. There's ways you can do that. Um, and, one of the interesting things is that for fights like that, you can't set a kill objective for yeah. the boss in exactly. PC. So you have to have some way of um, you do a dialogue puzzle where a fail results uh, results in them attacking you. I which... did this in a um, earlier version of um, Inversion. Right mm -hmm. now, it like the the way it kind of goes is that I replace this section with a, <laughs> a text based boss battle. Um, 
where I was actually just giving directions between two characters. But the, uh, um, but yeah, you totally can do it. And the way that it's sort of structured is that you have a boss who makes the completion of the next objective impossible. Because, for example, you set it to use a long um, interact objective. Hmm. So generally, if you haven't taken care of the boss, it'll keep interrupting. You can also and be I, a little bit more direct with it by using um, kind of the old technique of having two doors. Um, one it, and one will open on one prompt, one will open on another prompt. Uh, and for the secondary door, instead of opening directly on the prompt, you open it on the boss battle, uh, the boss hmm. unit's death. Um, <laughs> I, I don't remember uh, the name you know, of I, I've been the encountering mission. that. Yo, okay, uh, or, so or you I get around that. that once. Yeah. You, okay, you got to restart the foundry now. Yeah. Just completely. Um, but yeah, we're sort of we're sort of reaching our one hour time. Uh, anyways, yeah. uh, what I was going to say is that uh, I I don't remember the name of the mission, but I know there was one mission I played a long time ago where there's this thing where you're, you're walking down a hallway, you you get to this like a branch in the hallway where you can go left or right, and uh, if you, on the left one, there's a force field blocking the hallway, so you can't actually walk down it. However, if you interact with the force field, you can talk to the guys standing behind the force field. And depending on your dialogue choices, you may or may not tick them off, and uh, then they drop the force field and try to kill you. So the, the way I did it um, is I, I simply had a reach marker objective at the end of the map, and then in the course of the map, I had you encounter go into a room where there was a console. And the dialogue says, it's your choice. Interact with the console or don't. And if you did, it spawned a bunch of enemies. If you didn't, you were free and clear to the end of the map. Uh, uh, I did something similar in Diplomacy in the Gamma Quadrant because there's a part of the mission where you can... Uh, there's a force field uh, blocking off your access to one of the rooms in the underground base. And if you interact with the force field, uh, or if you, it, it will tell you that uh, you can in, oh, drop the force field by messing with a console next to it. But that, I don't remember if I actually explained that Endless is going to try to kill you if you uh, mess with her force field, but yeah, she tried to kill you if you drop the force field. <laughs> so, uh, uh, also, the, the, this was one it? where yeah. I intentionally spawned it. It's so loading up the map right now. Behind you. See if Dragoon's thing worked here. Yeah. Alright, there it goes. Okay. Uh, nope, it's still bugged out. <laughs> yeah, so you're going to so, have to so, restart Stowe. Yeah, completely. so tell, okay. tell us what you were going to do there. Okay, then. so what I've got here is I've got two waves. i got the first wave, a wave of frigates, and then the boss itself. And what happens is, is that uh, when you start... Uh, try there's... clicking reset map. It doesn't work. I've tried. No, you got to restart Stowe. Okay, then. Which I'm not going to do right now on stream. Um... So you start out with a, uh, a non, non-combat versions of both your waves. So there's, they're in space there. You can see them. Uh, usually when you approach, you throw down like a reach marker or something. They throw up their dialogue. Bo-ha-ha, send the first wave after them. Um, in which case, you despawn your non-combat uh, frigates and respawn an exact copy as your enemy you want to fight. And so they, they immediately attack you. And you fight them. Once... Then you've got a uh, trigger set up to, as soon as you beat them, uh, it spawns like the next, turn. oh, I'll take care of you myself or something like that. In which yeah. case you do, do the same thing again. You've got your non-combat version um, that you start out with and then you despawn that and spawn in uh, the true uh, boss and you do your fight. And that way you can kind of get a staggered boss fight because until Ooh, they... Here's, they here's, here's an idea. Uh, as a story thing, uh, say that the um, guy on the first ship you blew up did an emergency beam out right before the ship exploded. Well, I mean, you don't even have to do that. You could just have just just a way so that you're not like dogpile like a bunch of enemies on the player at right. once. Oh, um, yeah. Okay, there's options. 
Mm-hmm. You'll break it into waves. There's all ki- all kinds of stuff you can do with story as well, as well with all this mechanics. Um, well, like I said, we're going to do a little bit shorter today, so um, I think we're going to conclude it there. Uh, Dragoon, if you want to put up our contact info. Okay. We can be reached by email at foundryroundtable at live.com. We are also on Twitter at Foundry Round tab. Dragon can be reached at Dragon1701. Duncan can be reached at Gorgonops underscore SSF. Mark can be reached at MAR Hawkman. And I, of course, can be reached at Green Dragoon. Yes, and uh, don't forget the Foundry Challenge going on. Uh, check out the post on the official forums um, and uh, get your, your name in the hat if you're going to enter. Um, otherwise, we will say goodnight. Good night. Good night. Good night.